shit. Hello. I was probably Kevin. He would have something like that. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A lovely day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted. Hello, everybody who's here so far. Today I'm going to make some of these cheese boards, like this one here, um, and some drunken cutting boards. Now I can't make a drunken cutting board all in an hour, but this is the start to it. So um, also, we're here. I'm here for you for any questions that you might have while I make these. Got some cool pieces of wood, right? So I've just drawn on a, a cheese board I'm going to cut out of it. Maybe I'll fill this in. I'm not sure. That's kind of a cool little knot or whatever. But I've got some real interesting pieces here. And this is paduk. Have you seen paduk wood? It's kind of a red. This one had some really cool streaks in it. So I figured it would be really nice um, to make some, some pieces out of it. So I'm gonna be making, coming up, when my Shopify works, but it doesn't work yet, so you have to um, email me if you'd like to buy something, which currently, um, I think I have one drunken cutting board, and that's it, until I make more. Um, so I had some pieces left over, and what I'm gonna make is just some regular boards like this, with some different designs and stuff, and also, um, also drunken cutting boards. But like I said, I can't make a drunken cutting board all in one, one video. Be right back. Oh. So, out of my own mistake last time, I bought some maple to make those drunken cutting boards with, but it was um, a little too thin. Um, it was only an inch thick and what I was going for was inch and a quarter. So uh, I have these left over and I'm going to cut up some walnut that I have here. You guys have to see how I've set up my phone because I forgot the, the phone holder. So I have a series of clamps holding my phone there. Um, so I'm gonna cut up, well, I'm gonna glue together these two pieces of walnut that are the same thickness as that, maple and we're gonna make some cool things out of it. It's gonna be drunken cutting boards. And the most important thing about making anything curvy with wood is that you cut, however you're gonna make it curvy, you place your pieces on top securely and cut them together. That way they perfectly fit together when you swap out your pieces like maple, walnut, things like that. Um, Thicker to make shot glasses. Um, yeah, you could probably drink out of a wooden cup. I don't see why not. I mean, they make bowls and stuff, but it's probably gonna be more for when I start using my little lathe. I have a bench top lathe. Have you seen one? I've never used it. Because I've been so busy, so busy building everybody else's stuff that I have never been able to use this yet. Look how cute it is, right? It's little, it's little like me. Is that too close? So this is just a Harbor Freight type deal. Here, set it like this. And this is what I would use if I was gonna make something that was round, cylindrical, maybe a bowl. Um, and this thing comes with everything that you need. I don't see why it wouldn't um, work really well for shot glasses because I could adjust this to hold my um, wood stock wherever I like. And this is something that, you know, you guys at home really, could get and have in a um they're not very expensive maybe under maybe right about under just under a couple hundred bucks but you know all it takes is trying and getting out there to see what you can do and these are pretty easy to work with uh let's see rotten tree yes this is amy do i know you but we i guess i do now right we're all friends here so anyways, this is just off topic, but this is just something cool that I'm excited to be able to use. 
See what it's called? It's a, ah, it's heavy. It's a mini woodworking lathe. So you can take something square and put it in here. You can rest your tool on this tool rest here and shave it, so to speak, to make things that are round. Um, you know, baseball bats are made that way, bowls, just anything that would be round, which would be like shot glasses that I would make. Okay, so back to what we were doing. So, oh, I gotta show you guys this piece. This is what they call rift, rift cut white oak. Do you see these little shimmers in the wood? This is gonna be so beautiful um, when it's uh, sanded up and uh, uh, finished up, when I put some oil on it and stuff. Um, somebody asked what I'm gonna make that beautiful wood. I'm gonna make cheese boards you know, charcuterie boards, grazing boards, and um, a few more of those drunken cutting boards. I'm also gonna make coasters, little drunken coasters, because everybody, seems like everybody wants a piece of the, of the, um, oh, my lovely assistant has handed me one of the drunken cutting boards. I think this is the last one that I have left. Yeah, the other one, okay, uh, you guys are gonna have to tune in because I'm going to help support a, a wildlife um, fundraiser, okay, uh, but it's going to be a raffle, and the, this local falconry experience is going to bring me over an owl to meet, and I'm so excited. It's totally <laughs> worth it. I'm super excited about that. Can you even imagine? Anyways, I'm going to make some of these, but they're going to be um, smaller. I'm going to make cheese boards out of them, um, and I'm also going to make coasters. <clears throat> so that would mean that these squares or drunken squares here will be a lot smaller. So make it um, so that most everybody can get one of these, even if you don't have room for one of these big cutting boards in your house. <coughs> um, okay, so uh, I'm going to make this, this little guy here. <laughs> hey, Candy. Um, so locally, I'm actually going to be selling these, um, cheese boards and cutting boards and things like that locally. My Shopify is not live yet, but it will be hopefully soon. Um, but I'm going to be selling these locally and I will <clears throat> let you know where, where they're going to be oh. once I'm done with them. That way you all aren't running over and getting them asking them where they're at so basically you can make any design you want i was thinking about making the same design here but i think i'm going to get a little bit more creative um, let's put a handle over here on the edge let's make a weird handle here and see what you guys are going to see today is you know kind of the beginnings of this and if i do a live each time i make this it might be kind of long but You'll at least get to see the process all the way through. And, you know, if anybody wants something special made, I mean, I can do it, but I just don't know when. So this is an odd looking handle, right? So I'm going to cut that out and see what that looks like. I'm going to kind of get everything ready um, while I have you here. And... Let's see, one of these and one of those. Just do rounded edges. Just one that's round? Yeah. Okay. Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, I can do whatever. No handle, keep my wood. More Let's space. see. Yeah, maybe I will just round the edges off on this one. We're just making different things. They're all gonna be beautiful. I'm going to show you guys this again because it is such pretty word. <laughs> wood. Not word. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Uh, where is local? Local is um, Atascadero, California, San Luis Obispo County. Uh, there's a place in Paso Robles that asked me if I would like to put these in their store. So I'm going to do that. And the best thing about it is it's a cheese shop. 
And it's not just your everyday cheese shop either. It's one that I personally would support. And it is a dairy-free cheese shop. And it is delicious. They have a, they even make food. They have a artichoke heart sandwich called an altruistic artichoke, I think. Man, it is so good. Um, Michelle, you're in New York. Um, well, I will have, my Spotify isn't live yet because I will be selling my things that I make um, online through here, but my Shopify is not live yet, so you have to email me. My email address is on my bio. And like I said, I've only got one board right now, um, drunken cutting board. So I'm actually making a bunch more. So you can get a hold of me, place your orders. Um, and with shipping, we found out for something heavy, it's not gonna be over, say 30, 40 bucks for shipping all the way to the East Coast. So, and they need smaller things, that was on one of the big cutting boards, but these smaller things will probably be less, I would imagine. This Pete, Pacific Northwest girl, he wanted to be a woodworker, that's really cool. I, I wanted to be so many things. Um, I never really thought about being a woodworker as much just because I think I was already just doing stuff and I don't know what I was gonna do for a living. But anyways, all right, so I'm gonna cut out some pieces of this walnut here so I can pair them with these pieces of maple um, and start getting going on that. I think I might even just use this piece so I can create something right while you guys are with me. Okay, yeah, I can do that. gonna be a little bit of leftover on this. Okay, do I have my tape here? My double, I gotta find my double-sided tape. Um, it's in I thought I brought it in here. Well, I have other stuff anyway. It was that big roll, remember? Yeah, I thought I your cup. Uh, well, I'll use up this stuff. Okay, as with me as always is my lovely assistant that tells me your keys are in your hand when I'm looking for them. <laughs> oh, you want to see my baby on the floor next to me? Well, he doesn't have to stay on the floor. Come here, buddy. Oh, yeah. This is Kona. He's growling right now because he's like, why are you picking me up? He's actually really sweet. He's a good boy. See him, Kona? <laughs> He's such a good dog. Yeah, good boy. He's very vocal. He does like to growl. Okay, so I'm going to make this drunken cutting board here out of this two pieces. So then I'm going to chop off this little guy here. Be right back. Of maple and so we can make the first cuts on the drunken cutting board um naughty otter if you, otter if you're here this is how you make it two together actually gonna put the sticky tape so the reason for the sticky tape and what I'm doing is making one of those drunken cutting boards this is just gonna be a lot smaller um, so what's very important is that these two boards stay together while I'm cutting it while I'm cutting out my little groovy marks Uh, you guys like the, um, liked my dog. His name's Kona. He came with that name. But it's still a cool name, I think. 
Oh, you love the knots on the dark one? Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? It looks, it looks nice. I am gonna cut around it because this is gonna be a cutting board, so it might have traces of it, but you know, you wouldn't want your food to get in the groove or any of that. Who knows what's in there. What kind of tape are you using? Um, the tape I'm using is made by 3M. It is double-sided sticky tape, and it's not the foamy stuff because I've used the foamy stuff before, and I have something that I still cannot get it off of, and it pisses me off every time. Like, I've literally tried scraping it off. I've tried solvents, and I'm probably just gonna get a heat gun, but this, it never came off of here, so I never wanna use the foam stuff ever again. Get the, this stuff. It's kind of, um, it's kind of plasticky. What am I making? Uh, I'm making a drunken cutting board and also other random cheese boards out of different types of wood. This is Paduk wood. Have you ever seen it or heard of it? By the way, uh, where you can find this types of wood, like Paduk or uh, Rift Cut White Oak, see how beautiful that is? Like these little things are going to come out so nice looking when we sand it up and oil it. Uh, you can find these type of wood at a hard woods store near you and the one that where I get all of my supplies is Mayan hardwood in Paso Robles and we also have a location in Oxnard so if you are basically from Salinas California down to the top of LA say Beverly Hills Hollywood area we can help you out and I say we because now I work there and um so I've had pe more people ask, you know, okay, can I help hire you? And, and I can't, I'm not doing any, anybody's um, kitchens anymore I don't, because I'm concentrating on working for the Mayan and making my crafts. So the only pain about the tape is peeling off the little backing. And what I'm gonna do is stick these two together and then I'm gonna draw a design on it to cut out while they are together um and flip flop them and everything maybe i should have this around me you probably should. so just so you guys know this is what i'm constructing that that is the drunken cutting board and it could be of any any design any type of wood i like to use woods that contrast each other and so i use maple and walnut and down here is a piece of walnut that I'm working with trying to peel the stupid tape off of. Oh. How long have you been in the industry? Um, how long have I been in the industry? F since 1998 professionally. Um, I got my start professionally from a cabinet shop um, in 1998 and I've just been doing that ever since. I've done lots of other stuff and lo other stuff um, like finished carpentry and things like that and laid flooring and built fences and set posts and remodeled places. and So I can do a little bit of it all. My specialty is cabinetry and finished carpentry work. Hope I, I hope I'm talking loud enough for you guys. Why wouldn't you glue it together? Uh, well, if I glue it together, then it, I have to make sure that it comes apart and I don't wanna lose any chunks out of the wood. And also, I don't really want to wait for the glue to dry. Um, <laughs> you were born in 98. Damn, I was already graduated from high school. I was 94. Do I sell them? Yes, I do sell them. Um, if you look on my bio, I have a Shopify. It is not up and running yet, so you have to email me. And once I get, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I only have this. This is the last board. So I'm in other smaller sizes. And... Um, they don't have those for sale, but I'm working on the Shopify. There's a whole lot of hoops you have to jump through to sell things online. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of working on that, but just email me for now. Ooh, Lots you of people. so young. I look so young? Can you make a full-time living selling cutting boards? Lots of people are making them on TikTok. Okay, TikToker, can I make a full-time living selling cutting boards? Um, Probably. 
I haven't tried it yet, but I know, yeah, and I know there's a lot of people that are making them as well. Um, and there's a, I have seen one other person that makes this drunken style or has made it before, but um, I'm really not worried. I mean, I feel like if you're buying something from me, maybe it's not, I hope that it's not because of, you know, because I was the cheapest or whatever. I hope that it's because you would like to have some of my art in your home and that, that really makes um, makes me feel honored when you guys do that. Um, Chris, what is he saying? Married, I'm married, three kids. I'm looking. What wound? Well, what wood am I using? Is um, maple and walnut. And then that's what I'm making these cutting boards out of. But I have other types of wood like this paduk and white oak it's just discolored here from a board sitting on it these are going to look awesome when they get the oil to them you see how the grain looks um yeah you can make a, a good living selling into your crafts is you know i think figure the more unique that they are um probably the better your sales would be instead of you know everybody making the same thing like gluing up just different colored pieces of wood. Like, I, I do see that all over the place. Watching your videos got me into woodworking to work through PTSD from Retired Vet Mom. Oh, Retired Vet Mom. That is so awesome to hear. I have, a, have a, definitely a special place in my heart for vets. Thank you so much for your service. Um, you know, I think it's a, a, a life-changing experience to be a part of the military and I feel like that we should all be taking a lot better care of them um, you know even if we have our own opinions about war these people are still putting their lives on the line for all of us so hats off to you and thank you so much and that's awesome what what are the things that you have made so far I'd really like to um, hear about it sorry you guys I'm trying to go through all your um, being a combat vet and a paraplegic, it kind of makes it hard. Christopher, I, I totally get it. Um, I, I'm not in your shoes, but I can see how that would be very difficult. I empathize with you. And um, I think there's a lot of, you know, tabletop machinery that you could possibly still use. You, you don't have to use these same exact big machines um, like the little tabletop lathe that I showed a minute ago. That, that might be something that you could just, you know, kind of have at a desk and use. Um, I just wouldn't lose hope because so many things are possible. The human, human spirit is just amazing. Um, That's awesome. USAF vet here. Air Force. Thank you so much, um, Marianne, uh, for your service. Again, um, I think that People that put their lives on the line deserve to be um, recognized and also taken care of. Um, Tander says they just glued up some three quarter ply strips, five by five to make coasters. Love my content. Thank you. Uh, that's really cool. You know, um, coasters are a great thing. I realized that when I started this job, but now that I have a desk for when I'm in the office, um, I don't have a coaster. <laughs> I mean, I, I have coasters here and there, but I didn't bring one with me and I didn't have it. So I'm going to be making those drunken cutting boards, um, coasters as well. Let's see. Dem boys. That's right. Ms. Diva. We're going to, we're going to win tomorrow, right? You always got to represent, right? Um, and man, you guys, I'm sure every, we all know about the, the bills player that injured. That is just horrific. I feel so horrible for him and his family. Um, I hope he, he's showing some progress, and I hope that he, you know, gets better. Poor guy. Poor guy. Uh, let's see. Okay. Retire. I was Red Horse and Prime Beef. I don't know what that means. The military for a job wasn't a hero. I get it, but, I mean, you still could have been called to the front lines at any time. You know how our country loves to fight, so I... You still deserve to be commended for your bravery. Um, do I do wood turning? Um, I do, but I haven't in a very long time. And I'm talking 20, I haven't turned wood since high school. 
<laughs> and it was on a big, <laughs> it was on a big, um, a big shop size lathe, and I turned all kinds of stuff, um, bowls. It was interesting to glue things up like in either octagon shapes and um, make those things round and have all those different types of wood poking out. So um, it's pretty much like riding a bike. Once you do it and you do it long enough, you will be able to pick back up on it. Okay, my lovely assistant is laughing her ass off of here. Why are you laughing? Nothing. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I miss Ms. Diva. Um, yeah, that's really good. The poor guy, right? I hope that he makes a full recovery. Will he play ball again? I don't know, but I'm glad that the NFL um, opted to take it seriously and not just continue the game. Like, I'm sorry for all the fans that maybe traveled or took time off work, but it's definitely a person's life is on the line is more important than your time off. What? I need that checkered flag one. How much? Um, that's the last one that I have. This size is 250. It is 22 inches by 14 and a half by inch and a quarter thick. If you would like to buy the very last one that I have, <coughs> just email me. It's on my bio. The Shopify is not ready to go yet. Um, thank you so much, Kaya. Okay, I got to get back to this, but still keep asking because I have my lovely assistant here that will read me your questions. Uh, <laughs> If she can stop laughing long enough to That's do that. Fine. All right, now that I've got these things together, they are good and together because I adhered them with these 3M double-sided sticky tape. Um, now I'm going to draw the design on them. And just a tip, if you're making these, you might want to do the light-colored piece of wood on top. That way you can see your lines. Because with a, it kind of does blend in not very visible there but it is here see okay great now I just so have happened to have made some um, templates but I'm not sure that I'm gonna use them I might just get crazy with this and of course I'm gonna have to trim these edges off but just for fun let's see which way should I go first I think I'm gonna go this way first Let's just do, let's just get crazy. Make it weird. It's fun when we get weird, isn't it? Yeah, this is gonna be a weirdo for sure. Oh, then maybe that's too close. That's the great thing about this is if you don't like what you drew, drew on there, just do it again, sand it off, whatever. I'm gonna make this one pretty strange looking. This is just gonna be a weirdo, but it's probably gonna come out looking cool. I'm always surprised at, no matter what you make these things look like, see how random I'm doing these drawings? Nothing like the template that I made, right? It's just gonna come out looking really cool. Why? Hell, I don't know. Nah, that's too weird. You wanna make sure you don't do any, any um, of your lines so tight if you're cutting these out with a bandsaw. You don't wanna do them so tight that your blade can't turn with it. And I think I'm gonna start over. <laughs> because if it's double thickness, what? I'm gonna say it straight over. Scroll saw, um, yeah, I could try scroll saw, I just don't have one. Just sand my lines off.
Let's just do it weird, right? So what are you doing this for? What am I doing this for is so that I can make a pattern to cut out. And while these pieces are stuck together, when I cut them out, I can flip flop them, so to speak, and end up with a result like this. And I'm kind of just showing you while I do it. Um, I, I'm still going to make an in-depth video on doing this, but this takes between the processes of clamping and letting the, clamp, uh, the glue dry, it takes 24 hours between each clamp session. So <clears throat> that's why I'm not doing that right here on this live. I'm start giving you the starting off, right? So if you join me for my next few lives, I'm gonna do a live all the way through this. That way you can ask questions while we're here. Uh, thank you, Magoo. Uh, you can ask questions about it while I'm here versus going to the YouTube video um, and wanting to ask a question there and you're not able to. So. Um, and after I post that in-depth video on how to do it, I will do another live specifically for questions for that. So, I mean, that's my main focus is to turn all of you guys out there into confident people. If you're not already feel, then you feel like that you could do these same things. And with the help of a couple tools, you totally can. I mean, you don't have to have a planer. You could have a belt sander. Um, you have, if you have wood, a way to cut wood, a few clamps and some glue, and a sander, you can pull this off without any machinery, this here. Oh, sorry, you also need um, <laughs> either a band saw, a scroll saw, I would not recommend a jigsaw. The number one thing I would use to cut these out with is a band saw. You can find them for, even the big shop ones like I have, it's a stand-up, it's called a 14 inch. Um, I only paid a couple hundred bucks for it. It's just gonna be random, see? That's what we're doing. All right, so I'm gonna set that one aside for a second. Um, and like I said, this is what I'm making. This step, this first step, will lead to this after two clamping sessions. And you'll see what I mean in my next live about that. Um, but we're gonna keep working on, what I'm doing is drawing all my lines and everything for these types of boards that I'm making. And then when we're done with the live, then I'll go cut them out because I don't want to have to have you sit through me cutting out these lines. Um, okay, this one was just gonna be square. You know what? We can actually do this one. Um, what's that? Let's see. Uh, I'll just bring you guys over here with me. We're going to cut out this one. It's just going to be some rounded edges. So that way we can finish this one up before your very eyes. Okay. <laughs> you want to set, set them up maybe right here. Come to me, friends. Okay, so we're gonna cut out this one piece on the bandsaw. Here it is. Let me grab my safety glasses. They're over there by the saw. And my piece of wood. And this is the machine I use to cut out um, all of my, uh, my cutting boards and stuff. This thing you can turn like this and you can turn your wood like this and cut whatever you like. How can I purchase said cheese boards? Uh, you'll have to email me. My Shopify is not working yet, even though it is on there. So you just get, um, just email me and then I can tell you what I have. Uh, somebody did ask a minute ago if I could post what I have on as far as inventory. And I will uh, because I'm making my inventory right now. All I have is the one drunken cutting board that I've been showing that I'll show you again. And it is $250 you pay for shipping. Nice and quiet, don't you think? And it only takes up about two feet by two feet by about six feet in your, in your garage or your house or whatever. Uh, 
Um, if you're local to where to my area, San Luis Obispo County, you're gonna be able to find my cheese boards at a local cheese shop, and it is a vegan cheese shop. So you'll wanna go over there and taste all their goodies. And it is good. Now that we got it rounded out, let me shut this off. Now we got this piece all rounded out, I'm going to take it over to my edge sander here and sand it up. Can you uh, not trip over those boards? Okay. Why don't you lift it up? I think you'll probably not want to hold it while this is on. So I'm just going to smooth out the edges where I cut it. rounded out the edges pretty well. Nice and smooth. So let me get these uh, saw marks off. There we go. Nice and smooth. Can you come around to this side? Because I have to do over here and doing something. So if you're a woodworker and you have a sanding belt like this and it gets what you know as burns in it, um, if you don't already know, there is an eraser for that. It's a natural gum eraser and you just go like this. And you see how it removes most of your, um, it'll remove most of your burn. All right, let's go back over here. Set us up there. There we are. <laughs> That's what he said. It probably is what he said. <laughs> I don't doubt it at all. All right, so I'm just gonna sand it up here and then route it, and then we're gonna make it pop with some oil. Okay, you guys have never seen Paduk pop? Have you? Do you know what it is? Maddie9670 said, Carpenter at school, I broke a band saw blade. It was a loud bang. Oh, you broke a bandsaw. Carpenter at school. Who said that? Maddie? Yes. Maddie. Um, that's really, that's really cool. Um, yeah, you know, bandsaws, blade break. It's something to make sure you're always wearing eye protection for and that your hands are out of the way. Um, when I was in high school wood shop, we had a guy that was using the lathe and um, he was spinning a bowl, doing the octagonal thing where you glue up the pieces and then make a bowl that has many different colors of different woods in it. And he was using it a little to um, his gouge, the tool that you use to make the piece spinning around. And he dipped it in too much and that thing blew the, blew the bowl apart and went through the, the, the window. So that was a fun time, nobody was hurt. Okay, I'm just gonna sand this up. Please bear with me, I'm not ignoring you. Uh, we're gonna get to the good part here. 
Where's my dust mask? Hmm. That's what I need to put on. Oh, I know where it is. I'll get it. It's hanging over there. Yeah, there we go. It's always good to wear a dust mask. Here, I have the blower right here. It's always good to wear a dust mask, some protection. This is not overalls. This is a apron. People are always asking me, I like uh, kind of overalls, but they're not overalls. I wish I could find cool overalls like this, but I haven't found them. All right. <laughs> it's getting serious. All right, let's, we're going to sand this up and then give it a route and then make it pop with some oil. Gonna be using a 3 8 bullnose bit. <laughs> Almost forgot my anti slip mat. Very important if you're not clamping down your pieces to have an anti slip mat. And instead of spending a whole bunch on an anti-slip mat. I got, oh, I don't know what it's called, but it's from um, Harbor Freight, and I just uh, contacted adhesive, glued it to this piece of wood, and so I have this nice big board that is an anti-slip. Compressor comes on when you shut it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it's off. You turn it. 
Uh, what is this wood? Uh, no, good guess on the cherry, but this is Paduk. P-A-D-U-K. Let me get it close here in the light. Um, it's got a real reddish orange to it um, with some cool streaks in it. All right, so this is the good part. Now that I've made the cheese board, sanded it and all that, we're going to uh, put some oil on it and make it pop. This cheese board's done. So I usually don't have to clamp this anti-slip board that I made down, but where I set up my phone is in the way of the things that hold it. And last time I got oil all over it. So, so the next live that I do um, about these cutting boards is gonna be when I cut out, when I actually cut this thing that I made out on these weird blinds to make that drunken cutting board style. Which you all like so much. Like this, what I'm talking about. All right. Let's get the dust out of here. Paduk makes this like really red dust, super red. Okay, we've got our cutting board oil that we're gonna start off with first. Works a little bit better heated up. So I'm gonna heat it up real quick. My lovely assistant is going to heat it up. Um, and so the next, oh, let me sand this other one. Where's that board with the handle? Uh, get that one prepared so we can have that one pop as well. Since that's the first one that I've done of oak for you guys to see is this guy here. So I just made two this morning. This one a more kind of traditional square and this one more like a grazing board that has a handle. I've thought about putting a hole in it, but we'll see. These are all gonna be unique and different from um, each other. I think someone was asking for a juice, a juice. Uh, a juice groove? A juice groove. Um, I could, but it'd probably be, be if somebody, I wouldn't do a juice groove. If somebody wanted to buy the board first um, because it's you know it's just extra work and I would hate to charge um, somebody <laughs> a little extra for having the juice group if maybe they didn't care but I mean I can put one in bandsaw uh, yes that's what I use to cut the lines uh, York power are you a carpenter yes I've been a custom cabinet maker and finished carpenter since 1998 professionally and I've just always been building all my old uh, my whole life uh, journey to Renaissance. Can we make a custom order? I want a huge grazing board. Yes. Email me. Uh, it's on my bio. My, like I said, my Shopify is not working yet. So email me. That's on my bio. And you could, um, you can tell me what size. You can tell me how, what shape you want it to be. Uh, what kind of wood you'd like. Anything like that. And, and you know, I'll, I'll work out a price for you. 
that oil make the look the color look more strong yeah it really does it makes it pop right it's it's really cool to see that's why i want to give you two different things to see so i'm going to sand this one up real quick bear with me while i do it that way as she's heating up the oil um when i start applying them you'll see two different woods pop let's use the Uh, yeah, I've been a carpenter my whole life. I've been building my whole life and doing things. You know, my parents had a, a landscaping business. It wasn't anything glamorous. It was us riding around in a truck with lawnmowers and, you know, quick mow, blow, and go, as they call it. Do I have to give you dimensions? Um, that would be nice. That way, if you want it custom, I wanted to make it exactly what you want. Hey, Jose the Barber, um, thank you so much. Everybody, go over and follow Jose. He's an excellent barber. You're going to get good barbershop talk. Uh, he does it, even though my hair is not combed, he's, <laughs> he's the one that does my hair, and he's excellent. Everybody, take a look at Jose the Barber. He is at 13th Street Barbers in Paso Robles. Nice guy. Uh, Mary, yeah, cool beans. Okay, let's do this real quick so I can get you guys finished up. Okay, I don't need that for that. Gonna break out the router again. If you notice, I always hold on to my router when I um, plug it in because you just never know. <laughs> There's been times that I thought it was off and even looked and you just don't wanna bump the button or anything. All right. I said bump the button. Sand this guy up. Then we're ready to put on the oil once it's ready here. Looks like uh, about a minute left. brought out that wood see these lines in it beautiful beautiful <laughs> pneumatic sander, but you've got to have a really good size um, compressor to run the What do I have, a 60 or 80 gallon compressor? 
And yeah, well, I wasn't wearing it. is really loud so I usually try to leave it off when I'm doing these but I need the I need the power Got, this is just a piece of white oak that uh, has been in my shop for a little while and um, if I use okay so Mo Freaky 2018 is asking if I use my router and then I sand the the edge that I just made won't it mess it up um, if you stall with your sander and you don't follow the curve of it and keep it continuous yeah you probably could flatten out your curve um, or something like that and that's also why I use when I when I go for my edge my edges I want to sand those edges that I routed so when I go for those I use this one that it's it's easily it easily follows the grooves where this one is a bit chunkier and it's heavy and it's more difficult to um, follow the profile that I just made with that sander so you can see look at I just sanded it no flat spots um, yeah, you just really have to keep your sander moving. And a tip for sanding is never start the sander and then touch your piece. You have it on your piece when you start it um, or turn the power on to it. That way you don't get flat spots. Nobody likes a flat spot. Thank you, uh, Mary. It's beautiful wood, isn't it? The natural wood is just so beautiful. Look at the contrast we have here now. Let me blow this off here. Excellent thing to have. Compressed air. Look at these two types of wood. This one is white oak. This one is paduk, P-A-D-U-K. They're just beautiful. All right, here we go. Let me get this board out of the way. Our oil is warm and ready. Um, um, no, we have it right here. So usually I would probably use gloves, but this is also food grade, so it's not going to hurt my hands. Um, most thing it's going to do is make them look younger. You want one, Love and De Delight? Uh, you can purchase one from me if you like. Uh, you just have to email me. My Shopify is not working just yet. So let's get you guys where you can really see this. Um, I've seen some people on, that do make cutting boards that they like fully submerge these in a bath of oil and that's a, that's a great way to do it but I just don't really see that it needs to be but it is a different technique. What do you guys think about that? Here we go. Look at that. It's just shining. Uh, CWB Truth, um, there's not a set cost because they're all different sizes, different wood types. Um, I will post what, um, what I have available. And right now I only have this last drunken cutting board available. Uh, these things that I'm making will be available. They just are not yet. So, uh, if you guys want to know prices or what I have, until I post it, you then just email me. And that is on my bio. Here's a whole nother side to do. Let's give it a... 
And what I'm using here is Howard's local, it's, they, this is made locally, Howard's cutting board oil. It is food grade mineral oil um, enriched with vitamin E. And then once I've got a good coating of this, I'm gonna use the cutting board uh, butcher block conditioner. I, I've been, I've had success with just using one or the other, um, but I'm also gonna try using them both in conjunction with each other. Okay, so I need a couple little sticks. Which sticks do you need? I got them right here. I just need a, something to wipe my hands with. Okay. Paper towel, probably. Okay, so this one I'm gonna put on these sticks to dry. And I mean, really, this one is this one's done except for maybe another coat of oil, um, and then some of these. Um, this is probably I don't know. I might put handles on that. I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you. All right. And then here we got this one. Now watch all this grain pop. It just turns into a gold, doesn't it? See how pretty that came out? Look at the top here. It just gives the wood, well, it doesn't give the wood, but it shows the depth in the grain and in the wood when you just put a clear like this. And you don't always have to buy some sort of chemical, to, um, chemical solution to treat your um, projects with. You can just use like linseed oil, um, and not just boiled linseed oil. There's um, actually uh, another, some guy was just telling it to me about it. It's this guy that I know that is a carpenter and has been doing um, oil finishes for the past 35 years. Okay, I really wanted to show you guys this. The, the grain is just gonna pop. There we go. Pretty, huh? Hmm? Uh, he's looking for a nice cutting board, 12 by 24-ish. 12 by 24, who's looking for a cutting board? Uh, um, let's see, that would be Jennifer M, 56. Jennifer M, 56. Okay, you're looking for a big cutting board? I've got one left. The size um, that I have is, we're just gonna let those dry. Um, and when I say dry with the oil, you can see that they, they start sucking it up. I don't know if you can see the differences in, let me put a little glare to it. You can see where it's drier than other spots. So it's gonna really absorb a lot of that oil, especially since we heated it up. Um, it's really going to penetrate deep into the wood, which is what we want for ultimate protection. Uh, so Jen, this cutting board that I have left is 22 inches wide. Um, by 14, 14 and a half. Um, so that's that's the biggest size I have been making. Uh, I do need to put another coat of conditioner on it, which I was gonna do now. So while I set these aside. And again, if you're local to the Paso Robles, California area, you will be able to find my um, cheese boards and things like that locally and it's going to be at the uh, Vremery. It's called the Vremery. So just like you would think of creamery, this is dairy free so it's a V. You got to go try their cheese. Somebody ask, how would you wash a cutting board like that? How do you wash a cutting board like this? Um, just You just don't stick it into water. You can use your sponge, soapy water on it all you want and just wipe it off and then dry it off. Um, the oil should be protecting it. The oil and the conditioner should be protecting it from water damage. But you'd never want to take anything that's wood and submerge it. Um, I had a person that <laughs> said that they were running theirs through the dishwasher, which made me raise my eyebrows. And wow, what kind of wood is that? I, she said it held up great. So good for her. Okay, so now I'm going to read. 
this table isn't even. Oh, that's right. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit more because it got a little dry through the wet weather. Plus, I, I only gave it one coat, so. Somebody asked, do you sand between coats? Do I sand between coats of, this, of, the, uh, of the conditioner stuff? No, if that's what you're asking. Um, your sanding should be done by the time you plan to seal it. Because um, if you're sanding it, you're probably, I mean, if you're sanding it between coats, you're probably sanding off a lot of the protectant that you just applied to it. So that one's gonna get a little extra here. And this is rocking back a little, rocking back and forth a little bit on my table because my table goes, it's not flat. <laughs> but what each are, one of these are, are nice and flat. What are you using for conditioner? What am I using for conditioner? Um, okay, so the boards that I just made, the first, um, the first thing that ever went on them was the Howard's cutting board oil, okay? It's food grade mineral oil uh, enriched with vitamin E. Um, it also says it's great for bamboo. So after you put a coat or two of that on and it absorbs really well and you let it dry, uh, then you wanna add the butcher block conditioner. Um, this has food grade mineral oil as well and then natural waxes. So it gives, it, gives your board um, a, a better protection than just the oil it helps the uh, water beat up off of it pretty well and like i mentioned like i could have put gloves on for this but it's also food grade it's not going to hurt me it's going to make my hands look more youthful can i buy that one yes you can um if you want to buy something email me it's on my bio my shopify is not live yet right now i only have this cutting board and those two boards that i just made if you didn't see them there they are can you see? This one's white oak. This one is paduk. Keyword is paduk. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> uh, okay. Josh says, that's some good stuff. I use it on my bamboo cutting boards. Uh, yeah, it is really great stuff, right? Um, I was stoked to find out that the, the company that makes this, Howard's, is actually local to me. It's right here in Paso Robles. So it's a, see, it's made in the USA. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, around what areas are you located? I am in San Luis Obispo County. California. California. Um, so if you've heard of San Luis Obispo, Paso Robles, it's like wine area now. Um, that's where I'm at. Cambria, Hearst Castle. What? Cambria, Hearst Castle. Oh yeah, so we are close to San Simeon. Cambria, you know, have you heard of Hearst Castle? We are right in that area. Um, Morro Bay, Pismo Beach. Morro Bay, what else? Pismo Beach. See, I never think of that. Us locals, we're just like, oh, we're by slow. People are like, where the hell is slow? Yes, I'm gonna show you those boards. I'm trying to move all the stuff out of the way so I can show you. Um, did you have all these tools already or how did you get to the point of all those tools? How did I get to the point of all these tools? Um, I know I didn't have these tools always. Um, about four years ago, we, the shop that I was working with a buddy at and also doing my own thing, um, it burned and we, everybody lost everything. And I really only had um, like some hand tools, like whatever was in my toolbox and some screw guns and things like that. So I have acquired these tools over the past few years and Everything I got basically is secondhand. Like my chop saw behind me, can you see it right there? I have two of those, um, both of them, that one was, I think I paid 250 for it. And then, um, and it was secondhand, because that's a $600 saw, I am not paying retail. <laughs> and if you guys look around my shop here, I do have, I do have some bigger machinery, like this thing here, um, is where I make face frames and I also press together door parts to make doors. Um, this is quite a big machine and I only paid $900 for it on a tool auction. 
That tool auction is called Machinery Max. There's also an app you can put on your phone and they do auctions. Um, they liquidate businesses all over the US. So um, the localist one to me is a couple hours away, their pickup area, um, <clears throat> but they have them in many other states. So if you're not in my area, still look on Machinery Max. Okay, and then this big one, my panel router, I also got on Machinery Max and I paid $200 for it. The cool thing is, is this particular machine is a Hersaf brand panel router, which was actually created in a Tascadero where my shop is now. Oh, sorry guys, I cannot see any of your... Guaranteed you paid too much for that hat. Hell no, this hat right here, this is gold. You couldn't pay too much for a Cowboys hat. That's America's team. <laughs> sorry to break it to you, Mike. I don't know if that big fish is as big as you're claiming it is. That was his name, Big Fish. Love your cap. Thank you. Yes, yeah, skits, 1993, 49ers. You guys are doing good this year. I was surprised. Um, but that's cool. Burn it. Nah. How often do you oil the boards? Uh, how often do I oil the cutting boards? Um, whenever they get dry. It's going to depend on your use and, you know, your surroundings, um, your climate. Whenever they start to look like they have a little dry spot, I just recondition it. Um, if you get end up where you've got some like knife marks or whatever, which these hardwoods hold up really well um, against knife marks, but you can do a light sand, get the, all the all the um, the dust off of it, and then just recoat it. What part of Texas are you from? I'm from right from the star in Texas. I'm not from Texas at all. <laughs> I am from California, born and raised. I can't help it if the best team is in another state. Maybe they should move over. <laughs> like, we got rid of the Raiders. Why can't we have the Cowboys come in? Well, they train here. Uh, they do train here in Oxnard, which incidentally is another place where you can buy these fine hardwoods. <laughs> Mayan hardwoods. Oxnard, California. Mary, you just emailed me. Okay, I'll be looking for it. And I don't know if anybody else has emailed me, but just to be fair, I have to go in order. So if you've emailed me and you're like the fifth person that's emailed me, if, if everybody's going to get a turn to know, you know, to see if they want to buy what I, what I have. Jerry will not leave Texas. Um, we can actually leave Jerry there. I don't know, um, you know, I love my team. I do not love the um, feelings and opinions of the owner. And for if you can't figure it out, then I don't know. Uh, Raiders, what's my Instagram account name? Same as here, two girls, one cut. Which is actually, if you guys email me, make sure you spell it with two T's at the end or somebody else is going to get the email because uh, there's um, the, one, the, the one with just one T, two girls, one cut, just with one T, is not me. It's somebody else. And just always remember, two girls, one cut, TTs. That'll keep you going. <laughs> Girls selling the wood. Yeah, I'm trying to. It's a, okay, so um, the attitude talk, yeah, um, I, I had to do it, right? Um, after that viral video, it was just so disgusting, but I thought it was hilarious to just kind of play on words. So I didn't. Just don't look up. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I already have, Mike, and uh, unfortunately, it's burned into my memory forever. Um, so, uh, you guys, I'm going to start heading out here. So, um, sand, wood, wet it, and sand it again for a smoother surface. No, <laughs> I don't put wood, I, mean, I don't put water on, on raw wood. It's just, I'm just not going to do it. Um, the oils do not raise the grain at all, so there's no reason to sand in between. And the oils that I'm putting on are penetrating the surface of the wood, so um, once I, you know, sand it with a 180 uh, grit sandpaper, that is as smooth as it's going to get. So thank you everybody for joining me today. Um, and uh, the next live we're going to do is the continuation of me building that um, drunken cutting board as well as other of these cheese boards. So everybody remember um, how to order and ship. You have to email me. Email me, it's on my bio. I do have a Shopify, but it's not working yet. So I'm still trying to get that figured out. 
They were good in the mid to the 90s. You a fan since then? Oh, yeah. Okay, so I've been a fan since for, of the, uh, uh, the Cowboys um, ever since I was a little kid. And I'm 46, so I guarantee it's longer than a lot of people have been fans of their team. Um, you know the white Cadillac they used to drive out with the Texas Longhorns and all the cheerleaders in the back? Made me a believer. All right, you guys. Email me if you want to know about... Thank you, Jessica. Um, email me if you want to buy something or you want to have a question. Or if you have project questions, email me. My Shopify is not working yet. Thank you for being here, and I will see you guys very soon.